My name is Nola Benjamin Lothar, and this is a program of the Brunswick Area Historical Society. And what we are doing um, is we are digitizing Brunswick historical uh, information, uh, information about the Historical Society and Brunswick. And so the, tonight our uh, we have a panel of past presidents of the Historical Society, and we have four of them here, and we'll be talking to them. And there's a couple missing. Uh, Joe Bellitz, we don't know where he is. He said he was coming, <laughs> so we got to look into that. And then Amber Delacus is in Florida and couldn't be with us. So we have other ones here. And they're a great group spanning many years of history in Brunswick. So, um, has anybody here ever volunteered for a nonprofit? Yeah. 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 A lot of, a lot of, a lot of fun. A lot of pay. And so, um, can you imagine being president of a nonprofit? Um, and they probably couldn't imagine that until they got the job, <laughs> and then they kept coming back. <laughs> so, what we do is we will start with in introductions of all of them, and then we'll go in turn, which they happen to be seated in, the time that they were president. So. You want to start off, and uh, what's your name? My name's Linda Scarcella, and I was uh, kind of the first president. There was actually one before me. Mike Harris was president. Um, he was from the library. Oh, okay. And I took it over from him. So. Okay. And when were you president? Uh, 92, 90 to 95. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. And then? Uh, my name is Mamie Gruno, and I was the uh, Happened to be there at a time when we got the first property, so. When was that? Uh, 95 to, I don't remember what was the last year I was, was president, but I've been, oh, you, you've got it all <laughs> right <laughs> <or not. laughs> I found it. <laughs> okay. But the, doing, uh, yeah. The fun part was in seeing the buildings come back to the way they used to be. So you were president from 95 until maybe 2000, 2000 and something? Yeah. And something then you something. took over? Oh, I don't remember when I got in. No. <laughs> we, we had uh, Joe and Amber in between. Amber, yeah. 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 Maybe, right? And then you became president? I believe that's when it was, but I don't really remember it all. Okay. So maybe about, does anybody remember when Dave was president? <laughs> well, introduce yourself, first of all. <laughs> Dave Goodyear. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Everybody knows Dave Goodyear. And so you were president maybe 2013 to when did you become president? 2020. 2020, so maybe 2013 to 2019? Something like that, probably. Something like that, okay. <laughs> and? Carl Bilski. And when are you president? 2020 till present. Oh, okay, so you're still in the hot seat. <laughs> I've been in the hot seat here in Brunswick for 82 years. <laughs> it's so perfect. And so, you know, we have we have a lot of years of experience here. So just keep that in mind. If if you become president of the historical society, you will live forever. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's start with Linda. Okay. And you were when president again? Well, uh, I was pretty early, pretty early on. Um, uh, back in the 90s, uh, there was no group, and um, 
uh, Judy Bedell was the mayor at the time, and she uh, she um, asked for volunteers that wanted to work on the historical society, and we probably all submitted our name and became the historical society. And we started working here at the library. Uh, like I said, Mike Harris, um, he had had some library, um, he had worked with the Euclid Historical Society, so he was pretty good at getting things organized, like the, um, the charter and all that type of thing. He knew what to do. So, um, so after that, um, I think he went to Medina Library, and that's when I took it over. Okay. So what were some of the achievements, uh, accomplishments that during your reign? Well, I, seeing I'm an accountant, I, I did the, um, made the tax exempt status, um, the 501c3. Oh, okay. I, I did that. And uh, one of the first uh, meetings I had uh, to get things going, we had um, uh, David Humphrey Scott here from Euclid Beach, uh, like a membership drive. And we filled this whole room with people at that time. And he was pretty interesting. Um, after that, I was just trying to get the people interested in it um, in Brunswick. I, I, I worked pretty um, heavily with Ellen Gibbs. She had been on a prior historical society, and she had a lot of good ideas. And um, we actually made those little postcards. I don't know if you see them in the, in the barn. They're still there. They're, well, like pictures of old Brunswick. We did those with her. Oh, okay. And um, the other thing is we had a couple of Christmas concerts with the um, Brunswick uh, High School band. Mm -hmm. And we had one at the Methodist Church and one at the um, United Church of Christ Church on 303. What's well, not that church anymore. So um, those are pretty well attended. Um, you made a video. We made a video. We made the oral history. You made um, a video with the parents of yeah. some of the people here today. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That that was really a good thing. Yeah. Um, that was in '92. Um, we had your, your your father on there and Lou Fuller. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, Mr. Folks and Ellen Gibbs and Fred Benko. Yeah. 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 It's a, everybody watch it. It's on YouTube. It's <laughs> oldie goldie. Yeah. So I think those were the, the uh, highlights of what I did when I was president. Um, How about challenges? Well, it was very difficult to get people interested in, in um, the historical society mm -hmm. because we had no home. So I kept bugging the city when they were going to give us a house because we're at that time they were burning things down and I went to City Hall and I said you know maybe you could save one of these houses for us so uh, five years later they, they found the farm <laughs> yeah. good yeah. march on City Hall yeah yeah <laughs> well, um, what do you see for the future of the historical society well I hope it continues to um, exist I mean it's always Difficult to with nonprofits to keep them going. Uh, we have a new building now that we can probably use for lots of new projects and things. So hopefully that'll take us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you did during uh, your time that you would like to see done again? Well, I, I like the oral histories. Um, I thought that was that was very good. Um, we could do those again. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. Uh huh. And Mamie, what happens on April first? <laughs> I'll turn ninety-nine. <laughs> Did everybody hear that? Ninety-nine. 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 She's still as sharp as ever. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mamie, when were you president? Uh, 95 to, I don't remember what year it ended, but it was several years. <laughs> it was a long time. Huh? Yeah. Probably about well, 2000. Mamie, didn't it have to be when the building opened? Yeah. You were still president. 
Yeah, it was two thousand, right? Yeah, two thousand. It was after that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I, I think I served three, three, four year terms. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think probably till at least two thousand five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. I don't really remember. I'd have to go back and, yeah. and stop to think about it. So but, it was fun all the time, huh? Well, <laughs> they found a, pro a, pro a project for us, a property, and I was there when it was all restored. So. Tell us how they found that. Uh, well, well, a bank in Brunswick had uh, uh, knew that the city has the city was looking for a property for the historical society as a home for the historical society. <clears throat> this uh, Mary Graining died, and none of the family in Germany, Austria, or in the United States wanted the property. So the uh, their executor was a, a, a nephew, and. Uh, he put it on the market, and uh, the bank knew that it was going on the market and called City Hall and said, here's a farm that is from the middle 1850s. Uh, if, you, if you're interested, go take a look at it. Mm -hmm. So that's the way they, and the original idea was to, for about approximately four acres of the farmstead was to be a home for the historical society. And uh, then there is no, par uh, the city has no par park in that quadrant of Brunswick. And uh, uh, they, so they decided to buy the, the entire farm. So how did they pay for that? CDBG grant money, it's community interesting. development block grant money. And that's the way the city paid for it. Uh -huh. And it was uh, 250,000 or something like that. So. Wow. Linda has put together a thing for me, and I don't remember doing it, but she, it's my name is on it, so I guess I did it. <laughs> List all the properties that the the, build, the buildings when they were uh, when they were restored in the cost. So you were there when they rehabbed it. Yes, all of it. And so, what did, what were the main things they rehabbed? The first one was the house. Was to bring the house back up to so it could be used. <clears throat> Then the next one was the barn, which looked like, you know, you could uh, see holes through all through it. It, it, was, it was in, the structure itself is good. It is hand-hewn, pegged uh, trees that were probably cut on the property because you didn't want to drag the tree any farther than you right. had to. Yeah. And so each beam is a tree. As uh, it's been squared off, but uh, then the, the barn was the second one. The third one was the uh, carriage. Look at my look at the list I did. <laughs> uh, carriage house garage uh -huh. was the, the next one. Then uh, they equipped my shed, and uh, then they put a roof on the chicken house, and. That was that. Then that was that was complete. Then they never did do anything to the uh, the granary. It's it was in pretty bad, pretty good condition. So how did the inside of the house get remodeled? Uh, the uh, Protech Environmental Corporation <laughs> where uh, did, did did the work on it, and it was all just. Uh, uh, Really, we met over there, and and uh, the city put out a dump truck out, and we emptied the house out. And then they called him and said, "This truck is full," so they bought another one, <laughs> and we filled that one with with stuff. The, uh, since the family was, and they didn't want any of it. So how did they pay for the rehab of it? CDBG grant money. Okay. <laughs> so. And it was for specifically a historical museum, is that Well, correct? that's what the newspaper articles say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So didn't some people come together and make curtains and paint and... Uh, we them? did. Sally Hunter, hold your hand up, Sally. <laughs> Her husband and I painted the entire uh, 
inside of the of the, the house. Except for the closet upstairs, we left the wallpaper in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but getting it getting it ready, we had not, didn't have a piece of furniture or anything to go into the house. But uh, we put out a call to uh, Brunswick. They gave us their treasures. Really, they gave us their treasures. Mm -hmm. We were flooded with, with equip, with with uh, people's things that they had sir, had saved. Uh, I remember going over one Saturday, and uh, here's there's a there are things sitting on that back porch by the uh, uh, the kitchen, and uh, I wonder what in the world is this? Somebody had just dropped off dishes, antique dishes. And was, uh, you know, it was, that's, that's the way things came. But then it's, I had no experience at uh, uh, how to set up a historical society, uh, the, the office, what do you need? So we called in the state, we talked with uh, Oberlin Historical Society, we talked with several different ones, picked their minds as to what they, your, the bare things that you needed to, to get started. So how do you, uh, you, you have an accession paper? Everything that you take in needs an accession paper because you need a record of it. And the people who are giving it need a, a, a record also so that, that they, can, they can take it off their income tax if they want. Right, and how long did all this take you from 1995 Till 2010, about so. <laughs> well, it, you opened to the public in what? 2000. 2000. Mm -hmm. So you were busy bees for all those years. We had one piece of furniture, uh, plus the stove, in the kitchen. Stove in the kitchen, and we had a settee in the in the dining room, in the living in the parlor, and that was that was the the amount of furniture that was in the house when we opened to the public. But. Uh, Personally, I felt that people needed to see it so that they knew what we needed to, and so that they would, they would give. And they right. have, they have. Well, just to see it, to see how it was mm -hmm. back in the day. And the, the, uh, in, in setting up the uh, whole, uh, your, what you, what you think is your, your, your aims, Mm -hmm. you're, you're, uh, there's a, a certain term, and I forgot it, Linda. <laughs> Goals. Goals. Uh, that was to keep it as a farm right. so that you could show people of today, or later on down that road, what a farm was like in the mid-1800s. Right. And the barn, the people who worked on the barn worked on uh, the equipment shed and did several. Uh, his name was Bruce Barnhart, and uh, uh, he was a historian himself. He loves history and love, loves uh, uh, rehabbing, bringing back to, to, to its original range. And when the barn, those of you who remember, uh, you walked in and you saw that so you could just see daylight through uh, all these holes <laughs> in the barn, and uh, uh, the uh, he wanted you know since it's hand hewn and pegged you know the wood it's melted together a hundred years it's melted together, and if you take it apart it's he told him you're you're never going to get it put back together right, and his idea was to lift it up. You put a, put a, uh, the barn had no foundation. It had eight uh, piers. piers, and it sat, it sat there for all those years on the, uh, those piers. Remember, all the, the winds, it's at the top of the top of the hill, so you get a lot of wind. Yeah. And uh, um, but it, st it stood, and uh, he put a, a a pad, a concrete pad, a foundation under, it, and lifted it up. And filled the, did the rest of took the whole well they took the skin off the barn, as at but they left the roof on it to uh, protect it, but uh, then just set it back down where it was. One thing I know about Mamie is you were on a 
a lot of videos that you were doing interviews over the years and you went to a lot of schools dressed up to to yes. <laughs> tell them one of the big things she did was she chronicled all these years of historical society information by newspaper clipping she took pictures and there's seven binders which oh, ten what Ten, ten binders. But what we're going to do is we're working on digitizing those, uh, you know, along with the stories that go with them. And, you know, it'll be, what's that word, in perpetuity? In perpetuity. <laughs> we're going to make it all in perpetuitous. And, uh, but, I mean, it, these are big binders and they're really fascinating. I'm like through one. and. <laughs> it's taken me yeah. several weeks ever since you told me about. It. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna do that because thank heaven she was doing that. <laughs> well, I figured uh, if uh, down the road, uh, if there weren't pictures, I wouldn't know either. Right. And I wouldn't remember. But if if uh, to, to take pictures, and this is before cell phones and that, so <laughs> did. Uh, well, the road's here now, and we want to get this stuff so that everybody can see it. To, I think it, it needed to be documented, and the only way that it was, nobody else was going to document it if, if I didn't. Right. People aren't standing in line for that. Job. At that point in my life, I had retired from Pulaski Vocational Center, and I was, my husband was deceased, my children were grown up and gone, and, and I was alone. So I had time to give to it. I was no longer working for with UNICEF at that point because it had moved, and uh, so I had time. So everybody here, you know, you can be just like Mamie, and <laughs> you can be 99, and you know, you can do this. So let's everybody get involved in this. <laughs> And have the fun it's, that she's had. It's a lot of fun. It's it's uh, it's self satisfaction. Yeah. It, it may not mean anything to anybody else, but it does to you because it help helps you to know that that maybe you have preserved a little bit. Right. Thanks, Mamie. Ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> so who's next here? David. <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> there were a couple of presidents between Mamie and I. Yeah, we, <clears throat> Joe Billets, we don't know what happened to him today, and Amber, Amber. in Florida. <clears throat> and then, how did you get into this? <laughs> you attended a meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about it. I, I just. It's important to have the history of our community. It's uh, very important. Why don't you tell people who you are in the community and then, you know, how you've got... Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm Dave Goodyear. It's, it's no big deal. It's, uh, <clears throat> well, what do you, I mean, come on, not everybody knows who you are. <clears throat> I own a farm, <laughs> farm I was raised on. I've got a few animals that are more popular than I am. <laughs> Especially Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie's a Charlie's camel. camel. <laughs> Nobody else knows. Um, well, I just history is 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 so important, and. Uh, I was a mailman down there when Pete and Mary Graining owned the place back in the late 50s. Um, I knew them. Uh, in fact, a, a niece of Mary's came over from Germany <clears throat> and uh, lived with them for a year, I think it was. And uh, I happened to know her. She came to the dances that I was running at the time, up at the old town hall. But uh, I, when I go down there, it's I still see Mary and Pete walking around. Uh, 
Now, I don't drink, I'm just nuts. <laughs> but, uh, I, I think it's important to know what's happened in our town. Uh, we're not a Strongsville, we're not a Medina, we never will be. And we don't want to be. Well, <laughs> that's for sure. But uh, <clears throat> our little town, of course, is no longer a little town. Well, hey, <coughs> Dave, me. you were a mailman. You yes, were running the the canteen. BYC. Right. Yeah. What What else? Fire. Well, I was on the fire department. Uh, I was uh, lucky to be on the department when we started the first rescue squad in Medina County, uh, Brunswick. That uh, that came about. Because back in the late 50s, if you got sick and needed an ambulance, why well, you'd have to call Strongsville or Medina, Liverpool or North Royalton. And of course, being on the fire department up on 42, which was referred to by the State Highway Patrol as Bloody 42, from Stony Hill up the river by. And uh, we were out all the time, and one day, we had an accident right after Laurel Square went in at the driveway of 42, and uh, a man died in the arms of Bud Fish, one of our firemen, waiting for the ambulance to come from wherever we called it. And uh, Bud went out within the next week or so and bought a used 48 Packard ambulance. Now, in those days, you didn't have the extended roof or the extended width, the extended length on the back. It was just a little bit bigger than a station wagon. And uh, he bought this two-tone green thing. Man, it was a tank. <laughs> Had a siren on it and one red light. The light showing at a front and spun around. And the siren was, I don't know, some days I thought it was louder than the one we had in the town hall that blew every time we went out. But anyway, we got that and then we ended up getting a class. The state was starting a class and uh, we piled in that ambulance vehicle went over to Akron, got our training, and uh, then we put that vehicle in service. And uh, So you were a natural to become president of the, the Historical Society. You were like known by everybody. You were like historical yourself. <laughs> you drove school bus. Drove school bus, oh! And you are the hero to somebody here tonight. <laughs> when she was a baby, what'd you do? No, I was in first grade. First grade. I left my doll on the bus and Dave brought it to our house. I fell in love with the bus driver that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> Yeah, driving the bus was was was, 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 was a lot of fun uh, to me. Uh, Dave, you want a job? <laughs> yeah. I, need more bus I need more bus drivers. I'm afraid your kids wouldn't want me today. That's okay. And in those days, there were times that I got pulled off my own bus and put on other buses because the driver had problems or so. And uh, my, actually, my last day of driving, they had pulled me off, and uh, they called me back early from my honeymoon, is what, what happened. <coughs> so I finally consented. I'd taken off two weeks of work, and uh, we came home to honeymoon early. And the boss knew I was back in town. He called me and I consented to go in and drive as a sub on a bus that 
had problems. And it was a Bennett's Corners bus and Homestead Drive. Well, we pulled out of the bus garage and we went up and down Homestead Drive, dropped off some children going down Homestead, which is a dead end street for those of you that aren't familiar with it. Turned around and came back out. And on the way down, I noticed the kid was chewing gum in the back of the bus. Well, at one point I told him to come up and get rid of the bus, get rid of the gum. And uh, he didn't really do it as fast as I thought it should be. <laughs> so the bus was stopped and he got pulled up front and sat in the seat next to me because he didn't do his toe. I got to remember. Honestly, I had a bus, my own buses. We could be singing on the way home or in the morning. And if I said quiet, it was just like now. You could hear a pin drop. Because, you know, all the kids are great. Just now and then you get a kid that... So anyway, in fact, I had teachers who requested me I shouldn't be bragging. I had teachers that requested me to drive their extra field trips. So, anyway, the little boy sat in the seat and I started going and I realized he hadn't got rid of his gum. The waste basket was right there where the driver kept it. So I stopped the bus told him to get off the bus, and he got off. I shut the door and I went back. I went on up, left him standing there. He must have lived over Bennett's Corner some way because I was through on Homestead. I pulled out of Homestead and turned to my right, back towards the center of town. And although the bus was quiet, several hands went up. I said to the one little girl, yes, what do you want? She said, Mr. Goodyear, you went the wrong way. I said, okay, thanks. <laughs> and I kept going and another hand went up. I said to another little kid, what do you need? And the little girl said, she, she wasn't fooling with you, she was telling you the truth. I said, oh, thanks. <laughs> I went up. Went down Oxford Drive, pulled in the back drive at a bus garage. Pulled up, parked my bus. The bus, the boss came out and one mechanic said, Dave, what's wrong? I said, nothing, I quit. <laughs> I hung my key up. I, I probably should have thought better about it. But, but that was the last time I drove the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen and a half years ago, Jason, so I don't think you want me back Dave, today. Dave, tell us about how you used these skills at the, when you were president of the Historical Society. Did you make people not chew gum? Or? <laughs> no, I never quite did that. Uh, I, I really never did much in the Historical Society. Um, I enjoyed being here, of course, all the time. I help when I can, try to guide things. Uh, in my time as president, I'd never have done anything like Mamie has, thank God for her. Um, I, I think we have a great place and I, I, I thank all those that have been ahead of me as members, no matter what position they might have held, for maintaining this well, let, museum. Let's see if we can remember some specifics. How about the... For me? Well, I'm looking for people to remember some of the specifics for you. What about the farmer's market? When did that start? 
2012. So you were in on that, right? I don't remember. <clears throat> because I really turned stuff over to committees and, and uh, so well, I, 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 I really did that's, that. that's what's being a president. You were at the helm there. And so, I mean, the Historical Society was flourishing and growing while you were there. And, you know, new programs and all kinds of stuff. And so I, I very much doubt you were just a bystander. I tried to do things right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you it, do. Uh, I, I've been lucky. I've been lucky. There's always been people like we have sitting here tonight all the way around this room that have been there that have helped out when they could, whatever they needed. Uh, the parents of some of those in the room here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we could not be where Carl has gotten us to today without the help of each individual person in this room. Right. And those who aren't here tonight that have paid their few bucks out every year to be a member. Because keeps us going. this probably, to me, this group, and that includes everybody that's here, because you're a member or you're interested in our town. Uh, to me, that, that, that's, that's great. Uh, my life, my profession, being a fireman, that family. And this bunch here is about as close as you can get to family. And I've known several of these people sitting here as little kids. I, I knew your parents too, you know? And your uncle, and your aunt, and your cousins. It, it, it's, he um, was also a Brunswick Hills trustee. Wow. Uh, just, you, you gotta do what you gotta do for your home. Right. If you don't take care of your hometown, why? You're not good for anything. Well, thanks a lot, Dave. <laughs> My first time I ever saw Dave, he was playing uh, an elf for his father was Santa Claus, <laughs> and Dave was his was one of the elves. So. <laughs> You don't remember that, huh? <laughs> Where was your camera, Mimi? <laughs> <laughs> well, today I just have a ranger, honey. <laughs> okay, Carl Bilski, tell us about, you know, you in Brunswick. You've been everywhere and then all these things in Brunswick, and then how did you get into this? Well, first of all, I'd like to say Thank you to those who preceded me because they got this up and running and now we got to keep it running. So we got to get some youth interested and get them to understand how important history is. We really don't think of history. I'm sure we all think of our grandparents and great grandparents and how wonderful that was. Well, Everything moves on, so people change, and we got to get them prepped to take our place. I truly, truly, truly loved Old Brunswick. I was born in Cleveland, in a barn, <laughs> on Cecilia Avenue, and my dad says, where do you want to live? Well, I learned to talk early. And I said, in the country. So dad moved us to Brunswick in 1940. Whoa. Mom came too, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and 
growing up in Brunswick was absolutely amazing because <coughs> it was earlier, quieter times. Uh, there was no cell phones like today. Later on in years, we had a phone, but it was a party line, so you didn't know if you'd get to talk or not. But I spent a wonderful, educated youth, and I don't always fall upon the school system as educated. I had a few grandparents left. We had neighbors who treated you as one of their own. Education was anywhere you could find it. I preach a lot <clears throat> to youth today. I've been an advisor for 4-H for 35 years. And it's not so much how much you know, but it's what you do with what you know. I adopted a thought a long time ago. I never lose. Either I win or I learn. So it's a no-loss situation. And I try to share that with youth today. They're running wild. They don't know where. It's whatever they bump into that stops them. But if you give them a heading or an idea of what might work, then maybe they'll work out all right. Education doesn't hurt, <clears throat> but it's not all book learning either. Well, speaking of education, tell us some of the some of the achievements that have gone on while you're president. While what? While you were president. <clears throat> Do you have anything <laughs> you're leading to? Edge school. <laughs> well, we decided to build a building as an old schoolhouse. And I took some pictures of our old school that I went to. And I loved it. That's why I was there 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, I started welding and building cars at eight years old with my father. So they would call me out of study hall in school to go down and weld cast iron desks because the teachers really couldn't do it. Welding wasn't a big thing then. So they kept me a couple of years to continue <laughs> my welding process. But building that school is a great idea and it puts it back into the school where we all need to start out and gain some strength. Not physically, but mentally. Um, took pictures of the old school, drew up a, a schoolhouse, and then we got a local representative and a few of us got together and decided we would get that built, which we did and it's now paid for. But I've always been a problem solver. I look at things in a different light and like to do it my way or a different way. <laughs> So when it came to the bell tower, I designed it a bell tower. Of course, we had to go through an architect, so it's official and everything. We've now got that built and in place. Now we got to finish up with this final drive of bricks. So in the spring, we can get the brickwork done and it'll be done. And that's going to be nice. So. What are some of the challenges we got? Money is always a challenge, but it is with everybody in, in their own lives. It'll always be a challenge. I feel the challenges are getting people who care about where something is going to go and how we can help get it there. How can you be a part of it? 
we're sitting here as a part of the growth of a great thing. And that's something we can sit back and say this was a great ride. We got to get other people that may have that interest and drive. You got to build a legacy. It's not something that's bestowed upon you. You got to get out and earn it. So where do you see the organization going? What would you like to see? I never predict anything. <laughs> we all know the direction we need it to go, so it's a matter of getting together, taking hands, and shoving enough that it gets there. We can all dream of a lot of things. A lot of them don't come true, but if you work hard enough at it, and get with other good people, you can make it happen. So, we got all this history here, and who has questions for them? When do the uh, farmer's market start? That was that during Amber's time? When did the farmer's market start? It was a little before my time. 2012. 2012? When did Linda do the book about the church? 2015. It was the bicentennial. You know. And this is the bell that we have in the bell tower. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the bell from the bell tower. She yeah. was the original the picture of it. It was Maybe 184 could... years in Brunswick wow. when, yeah. it, when they closed this the church. Bell came to New York to the Methodist Church in 1852, and then the Disciples of Christ took it over. And, and they became First Christian. And they became First Christian Church, and then they uh, stopped being the first, they stopped, and uh, the bell came to us. Along with a lot of other things. Oh, along with a lot of other things. <laughs> You got that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. One of the things that I would I would like to I I didn't say, but since I it's on the paper. It's on the paper. <laughs> um, you can say it. <laughs> uh, what the city has purchased has spent on Heritage Farm and the purchase price of the thirty two and a half acre farm was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And the restore of the house was hundred and seventy two thousand uh, five hundred fifteen. Restore the barn was 109753 uh, Electrical, that didn't include any electrical work in the barn. It was $7,400 to do that, to put the lighting and that in it. Uh, then uh, the carriage house uh, garage was $28,800. Uh, equipment shed restoration was 68999 for a total of 387000 $467. And much of this, as I understand it, was from grants. CDBG grant all money was what the city all used. Of it. All, all of it. it. There was, there was, wasn't there some other grant money that was, was put in along the way? That Steve Hambly came up with some Medina County funds. That for the old school? Yeah, that's, that was something else. Okay. Yeah, this, this was the actual restoration work of all the buildings was that's what the city has uh, put into it, and it was CDBG grant money. It's your tax dollar at work. Yeah, it been, uh, the money was specifically for museum and historical society. It wasn't just to, to make parks. It was specifically for history and the museum. And there's With that being said, now our community interest and membership money and anything we do to make money has to uphold that. We have bigger expenses and so forth to carry this on. Right. And yeah. it's a real, real job. Yeah. Between Dave, well, between Mamie and Dave, during that time period, the city um, said the house was not safe. 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 Right. The city's and they closed it. Right. And they wanted us to move up. 
And it was closed for about three or four years, is that correct? Well, thanks to people in the city who came to and yelled at city council. Right. They said, okay, but now the city isn't going to take care of the buildings anymore. It's up to right. the historical society. It's so now all of the repairs to the historical society buildings, although they belong to the city, are the historical society's responsibility. Right, and we've got to make sure this gets this word gets out to the community to understand this. You know, it takes a lot of money. It's a lot of selling cucumbers and tomatoes in the summer to get this money in to keep this thing going. And so we really need to continue to communicate to the community about just what it is. And that's what we're doing in perpetuity here tonight <laughs> is we're, we're getting that out. Uh, does anybody else have a question? Yeah, I do. The original money was from grants mm -hmm. through the kindness of the Brunswick City Council. But when they shut us down, a different council completely yeah, shut us down a few years ago. The money to put the new roof on the house, the new siding on the house, the new basement under the house, that all came from people, our people, from Brunswick and Brunswick Hills, the Brunswick community. You guys are the ones that redid the place. Yes, we couldn't have done it without having that grant to begin with, but we've had some help with the new school, or whatever you want to call it, the museum, the newest building on our museum. I hope it won't be the last building because you walk through that house and look at all the stuff we have. And remember, history's being made every day. Mm -hmm. And what we need for our community is another building in my mind to be able to continue saving things and building the history. So we remember back to the mid-1850s and up through today. But I just want to point out that it was through the grace of our people, individuals that came up with when well, we had a soup supper a few years back. We've had other things that I can't even remember Tri what it is. Trivia night. We have another Trivia one coming night. up March 4th. There you go, another night that we can make a couple bucks. It, it, there's nothing more important, well, of course, your family is. Your family, your religion, but then our town. Then our town. So I, I just wanted to make sure that you understood that the remodeling, or not remodeling, that's the word I want to use. Upkeep. The, well, I mean, no, the for that redoing we had to do to shoot down ideas at a place at the last moment we were told we had black mold in the place. And that, of course, we proved that that was, in fact, that most of, most of us, all of us here, but most of the people in our town, our community, they're for this. If we get to them, maybe we might have to keep their attention while I reach in their pocket. Or something. <laughs> that, that's get, one of our planned programs. <laughs> Did I mention buy a brick? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the brick. There we go. Well, please join me in thanking these guys here. <laughs> and thank you all for 
Come in, buy a brick on your way out, sign up for a committee. Trivia night, March 4th. Trivia night, March 4th, where is it? Eagles Club. Well, Brunswick Eagles, there's going to be a lot of stuff done with pizza besides trivia. And it's Brunswick trivia. <coughs> yeah, Brunswick trivia. Not all, but there's some Brunswick several trivia. Don't chase away many questions don't Brunswick. about Brunswick <laughs> and the Brunswick schools. Mr. Hayes is right.